All right, before we get into to, uh, constructing our uh, optimal complete portfolio, that is how much of the risky asset to have in our portfolio uh, and how much of the uh, risk-free asset, uh, we're going to go over a couple terms. And I'll use these terms um, uh, you know, with, without much explanation later. So in other words, these are uh, fairly important terms that you know, we should be uh, come conversant with. Uh, so the, uh, what we're going to talk about here is uh, different types of investors. From this point forward, uh, we're going to assume that uh, investors are risk averse. So in other words, what this means when we say um, an investor is risk averse, uh, the idea here is that uh, they will only invest in portfolios where the expected return um, of, of some risky, so let's say X is some risky portfolio, the expected return on the risky portfolio is greater than the risk-free rate. So the idea of a risk averse investor is to say, okay, well, let's say the risk-free uh, rate is 5%. I will only take on risk if I expect to get more than 5%. So this is very natural, this, this, is, uh, this makes sense. So uh, we're going to assume investors are risk averse. Then we have other classifications. Uh, we will assume investors are not risk neutral and they're not risk seeking. Risk neutral would be uh, they, don't, they don't care about the risk of the investment. So in other words, um, you know, they will, uh, risk doesn't come into play. Uh, and risk seeking will actually, so they'll take on risk even if it has the same return as the risk free rate. Uh, risk seeking will take on risk, they, they, they want risk, they, they'll take on risk simply for the sake of taking on risk. So the idea here is uh, a risk seeking investor, even if they expect to make um, 4%, would still take that risky investment instead of uh, the, the, the risk free rate at 5%. Again, because they want, um, they want to, to uh, they seek out risk. They, they want to take that risk. So the idea of this, of course, uh, now do risk seeking? Does risk seeking behavior take place? Absolutely. This is a uh, this is Las Vegas. So any any time somebody's on a slot machine, they're they're uh, uh, or, or the lottery. This is risk seeking behavior. So in other words, what we can sort of classify this as is uh, gambling. So in other words, if we were to actually define gambling, we would, we would define it as, as taking, on, um, taking on risk uh, for, for not, not demanding any expected return for the risk that we are taking. Uh, so now what we would call this a risk averse investor, this makes sense, this would be uh, investing, right? So, or you could, you could say that this is speculation. So if I was going to define in, in the context of this course, uh, Investing or, or, or speculation, I would say that it's the, it's the taking on of risk for some gain. So in other words, I take risk to make some expected return beyond the risk-free rate. So you know, so this makes uh, you know, so the, this is what we're going to assume investors are. There's a couple notes now. The idea here is um, we still need. So now we have a risk-averse investor takes on risk. Uh, um, uh, only for higher expected return. I, one thing I wanted to mention before before I go on, in academic finance, you will he, we will often assume uh, investors are risk neutral. So maybe you might come across some paper in finance where it says we assume you know, uh, investors are risk averse, uh, are, are risk neutral. And we only do that uh, because it makes the calculation simpler and the fact that. Um, uh, that in investors are indifferent to risk doesn't affect the result. So in other words, sometimes you will see that we make the assumption of risk neutral investors um, in, in finance and that's, that's just a, a convenience. So for this course, we're, we're definitely assuming investors are risk averse. Now, the question is, a risk averse investor will take on uh, risk for an expected return, but we still, we still don't know how much expected return um, they need uh, for a particular level of risk. So the, the idea is still how, um, assuming risk averse investors, how does a risk averse investor uh, decide whether um, to, to buy this risky portfolio or not? The way we do this uh, is by assigning uh, utility. So this is, this is uh, uh, from, from economics, you should be fairly familiar with the idea of utility. This, this goes back to the, um, to the uh, Swiss, ma the Swiss mathematicians Bernoulli um, and the, you know, the St. Petersburg paradox. Uh, so um, what we're going to assume is investors have some utility function like uh, utility is the expected return on the, this is on the risky asset. So I'll just say um, some risky asset X. Uh, 
uh, minus one half a sigma squared x. So the idea of this is uh, investors like so the utility is is uh, what we you know of course this comes from um, this is your basic utility from economics so the idea here is uh, this comes from you know the, your marginal dollar is, is is worth less and less and less as you as you have more dollars. So the idea here is uh, we, we like expected returns, so our utility is going to be, you know, you want a higher utility, higher utility is better. Um, uh, our utility is going to be increasing in the expected return. So as the expected return goes up, the, the utility of portfolio X will go up. Utility is decreasing in the risk, so the risk is going to be this is the standard deviation, the, the, this is the variance, so we have, and of course this is of returns, so uh, as returns have more and more um, risk, a higher standard deviation, a higher variance, uh, we penalize utility. So in other words, utility gets lower as uh, risk increases. Well, A is the uh, degree of risk aversion, and this is personal to you. So in other words, the idea of this, and, and stepping back for a second, what we're going to do in the, it, you know, in the beginning here is we're going to decide how to how much to invest in the uh, um, risky portfolio, assuming there is some risky portfolio that we want to invest in, and how much to invest in the risk-free asset. And this is going to be a personal choice, and this is somewhat unsatisfying, not satisfying that it's that that I have to say that this is personal to you. What this means is there's no there's no. Uh, uh, Definite solution. There's only there's, the solution is only as good as your estimate of your degree of risk aversion. What will happen later, though, and, and the neat thing about Markowitz and the Nobel Prize winning idea of Markowitz is when we construct that risky portfolio, um, which we're assuming we have at this point. But when we construct the risky portfolio under Markowitz, the risk aversion isn't there. It's it's um, it doesn't matter on your risk aversion at, at all. So um, so the construction of the risky portfolio. Will not uh, our, our degree of risk aversion won't play uh, play a part. But it, but once we have that uh, risky portfolio, the amount to invest in the risk free versus the risky portfolio, our degree of risk aversion does play a part. Uh, one thing we can say, going back to our risk averse, um, risk neutral, and risk seeking, is it, you'll also notice that uh, if A is greater than zero, then the, then uh, the investor is risk averse. A risk neutral investor we could, would be. Um, the degree of risk aversion is uh, zero, and uh, risk seeking would have uh, a degree of risk aversion uh, less than zero. So I can we can state uh, risk neutral risk seeking uh, in terms of our degree of risk aversion here. So the idea of this is um, we can look at some investment, uh, and this is going to allow us to com to compare um, investments in, in a lot of different risky portfolios. And what this does is take every portfolio and puts it in, um, in uh, it adjusts each portfolio for the risk such that this, is, this utility value is often called the certainty equivalent rate. So in other words, what this is ultimately going to do is take, sort of take the risk out of each portfolio so that we can compare it to the risk-free rate. Of course, if, if this will take the risk out of any portfolio such that we can compare it to the risk free rate. We can also compare it to any other portfolio. So this sort of puts portfolios in terms that we can then rank. So the idea here is um, once we, we have these utility values, uh, we can then simply rank portfolios by, by, you know, um, uh, by our preference of investing in them. But so the idea here is this utility value, a little different than, than, um, than some other places where you see utility, this is called the certainty certainty equivalent rate. So uh, as an example, uh, as an example uh, of uh, certainty equivalent rate, um, I can say, let's say that the uh, expected return on the portfolio is 15%. So the expected return on portfolio X is 15%, uh, minus one half. And let's say we have a degree of risk conversion of four. And let's say the standard deviation of the portfolio is 25%. Uh, then uh, this is going to equal 2.5%. So our utility value, or our certainly equivalent rate, on portfolio X is 2.5%. So what this, this is 
you can interpret this number as we this por this portfolio uh, expected return of 15% with a standard deviation of 25% is equivalent to earning 2.5% with no risk. So in other words, the, the risk-free rate, of course, the risk-free rate, no risk, um, we can directly compare this number to the risk-free rate. So in other words, uh, what we're saying here is this portfolio, expected return 15%, um, a variance of 25%, with a degree of risk aversion for this portfolio, we are indifferent between this portfolio and 2.5% with certainty. So uh, the idea of this is, let's say, uh, the risk-free rate, again, is 5%. Then we wouldn't invest in this portfolio because uh, we, you know, we, we are, in essence, 2.5% were certainty with this portfolio, where, whereas we could earn 5% um, from the risk-free rate. So, however, uh, if, um, if the risk-free rate were 1%, then, then we may invest in this portfolio, then this portfolio is acceptable to us. So this is how we, we decide um, you know, whether, you know, further whether we invest in this portfolio. This is how we handle risk with this particular utility function. Again, it'll be, you know, one thing you can note, and I've mentioned this in the past, but uh, before we move on, uh, looking at this utility function, you'll note that it's a function of expected return and variance, first two moments of the return distribution. Uh, so, again, this is assuming that we don't, um, the investor doesn't care about higher moments, skewness and kurtosis and so forth. Uh, but making that assumption then, so this is quadratic utility, making that assumption, uh, then um, we can get this certainty equivalent rate. Um, good. Now, I think the, the only other thing I want to mention here uh, is throughout the course we're going to talk about the risk-free rate. And what, so the question is, what is the risk-free rate? Um, the the, the risk-free rate is, I'll generally t uh, say it's T-bill. So annual, it's, you know, T-bill rate annualized. Uh, if you know, if you remember, T-bills are uh, treasury securities with a maturity of less than one year. Um, you can also, in, in some other instances, people may use other, uh, you know, very safe rates and so forth. But, but for us in this course, we can just generally say it's the T-bill rate. One thing you might note is uh, we don't use 10-year treasury notes or 30-year treasury uh, bonds. Uh, the reason being, uh, these have a great deal of interest rate risk. So the idea of, of using T-bills is uh, they, they're, they're default-free or very close to default-free uh, treasury securities and they have very little interest rate risk. Uh, if you remember from, uh, or if you study duration and so forth, uh, as the duration, as, as you know, generally as the maturity of the bond increases, the interest rate risk goes up. So we don't use something like a 10-year note or the yield on a 30-year uh, bond because again, a lot of interest rate risk. Good, so I think this brings us up to the point where we can start constructing or, 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 or finding the, um, the proportion that we invest in the complete portfolio. And I'll leave that to another lecture.